In this video, what we're going to be doing is taking a look at this site here, which is a blog that I put together and uh, it looks like a regular blog like this, but the fancy thing with it and the nice thing with it is it's all static files. It's static HTML, CSS and JavaScript, except updating static files to create a new blog post would be a nightmare and be really bad. But look at this, it's static files, but we can just come in here, go over to my admin and I have an admin panel. Look at that, there's my admin, there's all my existing articles. I can make a new blog post here. Let's go into this one here. I don't like the title of it. Learn all about CSS inset. I click publish over here, publish it right now. Doesn't take too long. And what's happening is if I go back to my page now, let's just, I'll leave my admin open. Let's just go back to my page, check it out. We'll go back over to my blog page and learn all about, it's updated the title. Look at that, that was cool, right? I could update the image, I could make any change I want through a CMS and it's updating static files all on its own. Now it's doing all of this using a admin panel that is linked to GitHub. So it's pushing a change live to GitHub. That then triggers Netlify to rebuild the site and the whole site gets rebuilt and publishes it online within like less than 30 seconds. It's really, really incredible. And all of this is working because I'm using a static site generator called Eleventy. So what we're gonna be doing is I've already created an HTML and CSS page. It's just static HTML, CSS. So we're gonna look at how we can take those static files, bring Eleventy into our project, convert those static files into template files, get all of that onto GitHub, get GitHub connected to Netlify and get it all working. It sounds like a lot of steps. You'll notice it is a bit of a longer video, but I've timestamped the whole thing for you. And it might seem like a lot, but it's actually a lot easier than it looks and I just think it's, this is such a nice way to work. Hello my friend and friends and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here my name is Kevin and here at my channel normally I'm diving into the wonderful world that is CSS but as you can see here we're going to be doing something a little bit different but before we dive any deeper into it I want to let you know that this video is being brought to you by Code Mentors Dev Projects. If you've been following me for a little while you probably know that I'm a really big advocate of learning things by doing things and by working on projects instead of just following little individual tutorials and because of that I absolutely love Dev Projects. It's a free community where users can learn by working through projects that are designed by senior developers, by mentors, or even by me because this is my solution to a challenge that I put up over on Dev Projects. Now if you get stuck along the way or if you're just having trouble with your front end journey in general, Dev Projects is created by Code Mentor, a platform that enables users to connect with mentors live with one-on-one -on -one time to help you work through the issues that you're having. As I said, I put a project together for them on their Dev Projects and it's one that I'm really excited about because I've really fallen in love with the world of static site generators. When you first get into the world of static site generators, it can sometimes feel like there's a lot of different things to learn at once. So the whole purpose of this tutorial here is to try and simplify that world as much as possible. So let's go and dive into the code. All right, so we are here in GitHub right now and I'm, I am assuming a little bit for this project that you're familiar with at least the basic Git flow because it's gonna make your life a lot easier uh, as well as maybe have used NPM before for a few different things and just it's a little bit more advanced than just like very basic HTML and CSS but I will try and break things down as much as possible along the way. If you're not already on GitHub, make a GitHub account because it's also going to be the easiest way to get started with uh, actually getting it hosted in online as because if you're using Netlify or other options, even GitHub pages, you need to have your page on GitHub first and it, it makes the workflow just amazing as well. So we're going to be seeing all of that uh, as we work our way through here. Just really fast, if you do want the link to this starting repo right here, it is included in the dev project. So check out the link to the dev project down below. From there, you can find a link to both this starting repo as well as my solution because that's one of the nice things with dev projects. Not only can you find projects to work on, but you can also share your own solutions and get feedback on them as well. Now in here, I've already done all the HTML and CSS as static files, but that's not gonna help us with what we wanna do. If you wanna try and uh, sort of challenge yourself to even do that stage, I've also included the design file so you can go all the way back and build it out from scratch and then go to the next stage, which is what we're gonna be focusing on in this video of taking static HTML and CSS and turning them into templates that we can use for a blog or anything else that you wanna do with it really. But in this case, it will be a blog. And so what you can do is you can just come here and you use use this template and that's gonna let you make a repo. So we're gonna come in here and call this, um, we'll call it uh, 11 t blog site. Because I don't know, I'm not being very original. If you want, you give it a description. Hopefully you gave it a better name. Make it public, private, it's up to you. And then just create, uh, create repository from template. And you're be off and running, it shouldn't take very long. 
And now I'm also a very big fan of simplicity. I like GUIs, uh, user interfaces, all of that. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna open it with GitHub Desktop. If you prefer working from the command line, all power to you. Uh, but I'm gonna open this in GitHub Desktop. Nice thing here, it says where it's coming from, where it's gonna be saving it to, and I can click clone. If you don't have GitHub Desktop already, you might have to install it, but it's very easy to use. So I can click clone just like that and to download all the files, put them on my machine and I'm ready to work. And then I can just click open in Visual Studio Code. And just like that, I'm off and running in VS Code, which is just wonderful. Um, so let's actually go and check out what we're gonna be starting with because we do have some things here. So I, for now, I'm gonna click this go live button just so we can see the design that we're working from. And then we're gonna sort of backwards work this into a template as we go. And we're gonna learn a lot about 11T along the way. So currently we have something that looks like this. My images aren't quite working right now, but that's fine. Uh, we'll fix those up. Um, the link, a lot of these links aren't gonna work just because we're gonna be changing the setup in here. So we also have my all articles. Let's go and check that one out. Um, so the all articles is just gonna be a list of all the articles that are gonna be in there. And the last thing that we're gonna have is the individual article page as well. So we can open that one up and right now it's a little bit broken and actually that should be pushed down to the bottom. <laughs> um, but we have the individual articles that will be coming uh, in here as well. So we have different things that will be coming in, just a basic template that we can work from and turn this into an actual, from a fully static site to something that will can be turned into something a bit more dynamic. Um, so the very first thing we're gonna do before we worry about anything else and worry about these files and how we're gonna set things up, is I'm gonna open up my terminal because um, we need to come into the command line for a little bit of the stuff here. If you're not used to the command line, we're not gonna do anything too scary. Uh, but if you've never been in there, what you're gonna have to do actually is start off by going to, and I'll link this down below as well, nodejs.org and downloading node uh, because this comes with the node package manager which we're gonna be using for this project. So it's important that you have that already. If you don't, it's just, you click download, you click in next, 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 and installs it on your computer, and then you can do these next steps. So what we wanna do, and we wanna come in and say npm init hyphen, uh, hyphen y. And that's going to initialize our project, and the hyphen y is just saying answer yes to all the questions, because it asks a whole bunch. A lot of the time we just use the defaults anyway. So just like that, we it makes it. And that what that's doing is it's giving us this package.json, and then I'm just gonna write clear there so we can get rid of all that. And the next thing we wanna do here while we're here is we're gonna do another npm, and we're gonna write install. And what we want to install is 11T, and it is a scoped package, so you're gonna do an 11T like this, so 11, the number 11TY, forward slash, and then you're gonna write 11T out. And then you do a space, hyphen, hyphen, save, dev. And I'm zoomed in, so it's breaking over multiple lines, but there you go, normally it would look something like that. And the reason we're writing save dev is because this is a dev dependency. It's something we need for the development process, but it's not something that will be public facing. So it's gonna let the project know that we need this as something to work, but only on the development side. You hit return and it takes a little bit to install. It's gonna grab all the files and all the stuff it needs for 11T to work. And it's going to create a node package, uh, node modules, I should say, folder in here. And it shouldn't take too much longer. Let's go, let's go. There we go, node modules. And that's just full of stuff. You don't want to go in there. Don't even worry about it. It's just there. <laughs> if you've never used uh, NPM or you've never had your node modules before, just it's there, we need it, but you don't have to worry about it. So now we have 11T installed in our project. And so if I come and look, I have now my package file and I have a package.json file. And the package.json, uh, sorry, a package lock.json file. And the lock, you're not gonna come in here, it's just making sure you have the right version of everything that you're gonna need along the way. You won't be going in that. Uh, but what we will be doing is going inside of our package file here. So just the regular package.json. And we're gonna come in our test script and we're gonna delete that. And we're gonna replace it with, and you can do different things here, but I'm gonna do a start command. Um, another one that's often you'll see here is a dev. So your dev, you do an npm run dev when you're doing your development work. So you could have dev. I'm just gonna do start because it, it's a little faster. Uh, and here what I'm gonna write is 11t hyphen hyphen serve. And the serve there is just a flag that we can run uh, that's going to have a live server running for us. So we can, it uses browser sync, which is wonderful. Uh, and then we'll do a build here, build. And we'll write 11t. And that's it, we'll just do 11T just like that. I was gonna put something else, but we don't need anything else. It just works when we just have that right there. Um, so I have my start, which is gonna serve. It's gonna have the, the server running for us, hit save, all the changes come. It's browser sync, it's wonderful. And then we have my build and 11T here, which is when we need to build the site, it's gonna run that command. 
and we're almost ready to get going, but we do need to create one more file, uh, which is a configuration file for 11T. So I'm gonna click a new. So it's gonna be a dot 11T.js. So in here, we're gonna start simple and we're slowly gonna have to add a little bit more to this configuration file. Uh, but as very basic, we're just gonna start with a module.exports and it's going to be equal to a function which we're gonna put 11t config in here. And basically what I wanna tell it is where my source files or my source, yeah, where my source is coming from, where am I working from? And also where are the public facing files going to be located? And that's the very first thing we wanna do. And if you're just wondering how I'm setting or like why I even know all of this, this is from the 11t documentation right here. You can see it's talking about all of this right here. Uh, anytime you're using something new, I definitely recommend checking out the documentation, making sure you understand why you're doing different things. So, you know, and that's, you know, I'm not just figuring this out on my own. Uh, it's always through the documentation that we learn. And so we can see there's the basic example now because um, I, you'll notice here's a really basic example. And then here it's within, like here we have the module exports and then here it has the function. I am doing it with the function here because we will have to be configuring some extra stuff after. So just, we don't have to add it after the fact. Um, and then we can still have our input and output. So let's come and drop this in there. So we're doing a return directory input, and I'm also gonna change the output. So here we can put output. Um, so the input in this case is my SRC. So I'm gonna tell it all the files I'm working from are in my SRC folder. If you don't put an output, it's optional. It's going to output by default to underscore site. So if you think that's fine, then just you don't have to include an output. I'm going to change this to public uh, just because I do think it's a bit more obvious. This is my public folder. This is the one that everybody is seeing and my source is where I'm working out of. If you have a different way you want to work, there's nothing, you know, that's perfectly fine. We're ready to go and now we can start using 11T. Just make sure you save your file because sometimes I forget to do that. Um, so it knows that I want to be working out of these files over here and I already have some HTML files. So watch this. If we just come, let's open up my terminal again. And uh, it, to open up the terminal, I don't know if I mentioned it before, <laughs> you just go to view and you go to terminal, it's right there, or you can see it's control back tick. And if you're on a Mac, it's probably command back tick. And now we can do our NPM start. Because if you remember before I do that, in my package, we said that the start command or the start script will be 11t serve. So NPM start, hit return on my keyboard, and there we go, it's launched it locally. You also get a little UI, and if you wanna check out something on your phone, you just go to that address on your phone, as long as you're on the Wi-Fi, same local network, it will work, it's fantastic. Um, now, there will be some things that aren't gonna work properly just because of 11T, but we can see at least we have something that's working here. I have a page, I don't even know if the links are gonna work right now, they're not, but that's okay. We're gonna get all this working as we go through it. Uh, even the CSS is broken, everything is broken. You might be going, well, why is the CSS broken? And interestingly enough, if we come and look here, if I look in my source folder, I have my all articles, my index, and my individual article. And what 11T has done, if we go into my public folder now, we can actually see that it made an index. And for all those other ones, it creates um, like pretty URLs. So it makes like an index within the folder. So, you know, it just means that you don't have a, an extension at the end, like a .html. You just go to individual article and you'll find that page. But you'll notice it hasn't brought the assets in. It did bring the blog because the blog has markdown files. So by default, it's taking HTML files, markdown files, other templating languages. It will automatically take those. But what it will not take and it won't touch um, is other things like this assets folder, which has an image in it and images over here. And it did not take my CSS file. So I actually have to tell 11T to do that. So to be able to change a configuration file, we have our 11T.js, that's our configuration file. To be able to change that, you wanna stop this process because you can't update a configuration file. It's not gonna change if everything is running. So I'm gonna do a control C and that says terminate job. I do yes and now we can clear that and we're, we're not running anything. It's not watching my files and I can come in here and this is why I wanted my 11T config in the first place is to tell it we, we do want it to grab a few of the files. We need our CSS, we need our images and all of that. So to tell uh, if you ever have things that you need 11t to take and pass through uh, to from our source file to our public folder that it's not doing by default we have to tell it to do that so to be able to do that we do 11t config dot add pass through copy like this with the camel case the same way uh, and then we tell it what we want it to pass through so the first thing i'm going to do is make sure we're going to our root we're going to go to our src and we want our css so i can say style dot css like that Make sure you have a semicolon at the end here, and then we can do another one. 11t uh, config dot add pass through copy 
And this time, where do we want to go? We want it to go into our, uh, you can actually tell it, uh, you can use globbing here too if you find it a little bit easier, but I'm also going to tell it to grab my assets. So it's just going to go and find in my source, my assets, it's going to take anything that's in here. So just by including the folder, you don't have to say every single file because that would be a nightmare. So if we do that and I hit save, and now we do an npm start once again, so it should do it. It's going to rebuild all my public folder. And now we can go and check it out. And now, hey, look, my images are working because they're being passed through. And this first image worked because I think I had an on splash image there, but these ones weren't coming through before. So now those images are coming through and the links still won't work just because of how we set things up. But uh, at least my images are coming through and my CSS is coming through. We have a layout that is working now. So first step is done. All the things we need to get to that endpoint are now going there. So that's already kind of nice, but now we do need to start turning this into a template instead of a static HTML file. Because the reason we want to do that is um, if you had an actual blog that was like this and say right now I have some featured articles, right? So uh, when we looked at that page, we saw those featured articles and I don't want to have to come into there and say, okay, I'm updating my featured article. So I'm going to delete this one from here. And then I'm going to change this to another article. And I have to do this all through like the hard copy. Oh my goodness, that would be an absolute nightmare. So instead of having to come in and do everything hard coded in here, I want to set it up with templates. It makes it easy peasy, link it into a CMS and we're rolling. So uh, it's not as much work as you might think it's going to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to end this process for now, just because I don't want it to be building new stuff as I'm doing all of this all the time. Uh, we can do a clear. And what I'm going to do is delete my public folder because there's stuff in here that's going to, we're going to get rid of. So continue. Yes, delete, please. All right. So the very first thing I'm going to do is we're going to come into my source folder. I'm going to make a new folder called underscore includes. And this is the way 11T is set up by default. It's going to look for an includes folder set up exactly like this. So that's why I'm calling it underscore includes. And the very first thing I'm gonna do in here is I'm gonna write a base.njk. Njk is short for Ninjux. It's a templating language. The nice thing with 11T is there's a whole world of templating languages that you can use and you can choose, I think from like, there's so many you can choose from, it's crazy. So uh, I'm gonna be using Njk because I'm familiar with it. If you prefer other ones or you already have a templating language that you prefer, you know, go with that. Um, so for my base, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do an exclamation point tab because I want this to, you know, we want this base thing. We don't have to include that on every page. We wanna have a template that includes that for us. So here I have all of this. Now, actually one really fast thing. Um, if you go to your settings, which are under file preferences, settings or control comma, probably command comma if you're on a Mac, uh, come up here and write Emmet. It might not work by default. So you actually have to tell Emmet to look for like in this case, NJK files that it will transform or it will treat them like an HTML file. So if I use Emmet within an NJK, it treats it as if it's HTML and I get all my HTML Emmet functionality. So you might have to add a different thing in there depending. I remember getting stuck on that being very frustrated when I couldn't use Emmet at the beginning. So there we go. That's the very first thing that I want to do. So I have somewhere that I can be working from. And now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to delete the title and we're going to come here and I'm going to write title. And what this means is now the title has become dynamic. I can insert every page I have can have a different title that's going to get inserted into here. And we're going to see that magic happen in a second. And over here, what I'm going to do for now is we're going to write content. And we're going to do a pipe and we're going to write safe. And we'll see why I'm writing it this way uh, in a second. So it's double curly brace content, put a space, then a pipe, a space, and then safe. Um, and here too, we have the w, double curly brace. So this is like the most basic possible template that you could ever have. And what we're going to do is we're going to come into our index file here and we're going to delete everything that's part of the head and we'll go all the way down and actually we're going to delete that body tag right there too. We'll delete you. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll go all the way down to the bottom and we're going to delete my closing HTML and my closing body that are right there. And now normally this would sort of break everything. You have a site that doesn't work. Uh, but what we can actually do with this is let's just right click on there and go to rename and I'm going to turn this also into an NJK file. So now my index is an NJK and then I can come up here and I can add these guys right here. So it's triple hyphen and then triple hyphen down here as well. And this is so I can use front matter and front matter is not just something that's with Nunjux. It's with any templating language. It's also we're going to use it with markdown files after. 
So this lets us add like meta information to the page pretty much that we can use within our templates. So the very first thing I'm gonna write, uh, let's just try title and I'm gonna write example for now just so we can see that it's actually working. And we're gonna come here and we're going to write in a layout. And in quotation marks, I'm gonna write base.njk. I'm gonna hit save. And now let's come open and we'll do an npm start. Let's see what happened along the way here. So we're gonna open up our local host again. Um, you can either control click on it to open it or just copy and paste it. And you can see that my page has come in and it's, it's built a page for me and I have content. And you notice up here, it says example. So it's it's found my example. It's, it's using the title here. And actually, you know what, let's just highlight this even more how this is working before we move on. So I'm gonna close this. I'm gonna let that keep running. Um, in my base here, before we get to the content, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to write in H1 and we're gonna write title here, title. And let's close that off, hit save. And now you can see here, it says example at the top in an H1. So if I go back to my index and I change the title to my homepage and hit save, it's going to update here at the top. We have it in a bunch of files, but we see my homepage is up here at the top and it's updated this here. So it's taking this metadata here uh, that's within my front matter and it's injecting it anywhere that we put the title like that. So that's what these double curly braces are for. Now the reason that we have the content one here, content is like a, a special one. So it's just gonna take the content of the page. So it says anything outside of the, like after my front matter, anything that's down here, it's going to inject into the page as the content itself. And you can include things after content, uh, but it's gonna take the content, but it's really important to have the safe here. If you don't include the safe, we're gonna see a whole bunch of HTML and here's my SVGs that I'm using. It becomes a mess because it's going, it's, it's taking it as a string. Whereas if I say uh, pipe safe, instead of taking it as a string, it's saying that it knows it's getting HTML and it's gonna render it as HTML uh, instead of rendering it as a string. So there we go, we can see that we've fixed that. Uh, now we did run into a problem if we no longer have my CSS file. So let's make sure we link to the CSS. So we're going to uh, link link. Um, one thing that we're going to do here on the link is because this is, uh, you know, I could write style.css here and it should find it, but I am going to do it with, um, I just want to make sure that it's starting at the root folder. Um, not the root of like the whole thing, but I want to, like, it's going to go, it's we, like here we're in my public. I'm at my index, but we're going to have other files that are in subfolders. So this is just going to make sure that we're always going back to the root and getting it like the actual right file. So if I do that and I hit save, there we go. My CSS has come back in. So this is all based on here and we don't need this H1 here anymore either. Now, another thing that a lot of sites will do is the header, the footer, uh, you know, you have your navigation, your logo, things like that. Sometimes you need to update it. You don't wanna to have to update it in six places at once. You only wanna do it once or your footer text updates and you don't wanna to have to go to every page and update it. You wanna update it once and it should populate across all the pages. Uh, so we can do that nice and easily. So what we can do is let's go back to my index and I'm gonna grab my header. So we have all of that. We're gonna go all the way to my header there and we're gonna cut that out. So we can come into my includes and I'm gonna make a new folder called header.njk. And I'm gonna paste it right in there. Boom, we have my header.njk. Um, so we have my, my headers coming in here. Um, and then what we can do is we go back to my base. And so before my content, what we wanna do is include that header. So to be able to include it, what we wanna do is uh, it's like this. So in, it's using a curly brace and then a percent sign. The reason it's doing that instead of the double curly brace like this is the double curly brace will look into your front matter. It can grab information about that, that file from the front matter, from that metadata that we included. In this case, it's with this guy here. And this is, this is part of uh, Ninjux. So other languages might be different than this. But with Ninjux, we're going to do it like this. Um, and actually, just before I, I even say this, this is one of the hard things about learning a static site generator is you're doing static site generator configuration and stuff like that. And then you're coming over here and you're not, we're, it's not the static site generator that I'm learning now. I'm actually learning Nunjux and using Nunjux here that my static site generator is able to parse and turn into an actual, like compile that into HTML. So I'm sort of learning two things at once. I'm learning the static site generator, how to set it up, all the intricacies, all the weird things with that. And I'm learning a templating language too. So sometimes you get this weird, you don't know which one you're looking at. You don't know which documentation to look at. It's normal. We've all been there. So don't stress too much. The more you do it, the more you get used to it 100%. 
Uh, so here we do it like that. I'm gonna write include and then in quotation marks and I always say in quotation marks because if you don't do it, uh, it runs into problems and we're gonna write a header, right? Header.njk and hit save. And there we go, my header has been reinserted up in there. Cool, if I go to blog, is it gonna work now? No, we still don't have a blog page. Um, because I called it all, we, I changed the names around. So we're gonna fix those up in a second. But before we get to that, let's come in and do my footer. So for the footer, we can go back to my index here, go all the way down, grab the footer, cut that out, and then come over to my source, come to my includes, make a new file called footer.njk and paste that in here as well. I don't have formatting on right now, so it's not looking super nice, but uh, it's gonna get the job done. So I have my footer file. Then we go back to my uh, base file and you'll notice I have lots of stuff open now. I'm gonna do a control P and just write base because then I don't have to look for the file. I can just do that and it opens. So once again, we need to include it. So it's with my percent symbol, include footer.njjk. There we go, hit save, and now I should be able to see my links up here, and my footer is down here at the bottom. Nice. Um, so let's get this working a little bit with my other ones that I have set up here. So I'm gonna go to this all articles, which was the wrong name. This is my blog page. I just wanna be able to get to that. So let's rename this. I'm gonna do a rename. We're gonna call it blog, but we'll also change the extension now to njk. Um, so we have now, actually, we should be able to go right away there we go, we have a blog page. Look at that, it's working. I have to figure out why my CSS isn't working, but at least I know why it's not working, but <laughs> at least we, we can go there, we can go from there and then go back to my home. There we go, things are working a little better. Uh, so on this blog page, what I actually wanna do is delete everything, including the body right there. And actually we wanna delete my header too, right? We don't need the header anymore, delete all that. We can come all the way down and we can also delete everything, including the footer. Uh, there we go. So we hit save because what we want to do is just say that we want my, uh, in this case, the title can be uh, recent, or we can just call it my uh, blog. And then we want the layout to be my base, uh, to be my base.njk. So if I hit save, this page is all working. If I click on blog, we now have this. You can see we have a little problem there. That's fine. We're going to fix that later. Um, but as we look through there, everything is working. So that's great. My CSS is working, all that's working. And where the real power of this comes, and just to show you, like this could be one example, is you come in and you decide that your header, you need another page. So you copy this, you paste it here, and I don't know what this is gonna be, say a contact page. We're not actually gonna make one, but let's say you needed a contact page. So now if I hit save here, it's gonna update on this page. But if I go back to the home, it's also here. Like it's updating both at the same time. Or if I go to my footer where I have company name, I go, I don't, I didn't mean that to be company name. So let's just do a command P footer. And this should say copyright 2021 Kevin Powell and hit save. And it's updated here. And if I go back and I go over to my blog page, it's updated there as well because it's using this template across all of them. And guess what? We could even come in with some JavaScript and have this updated as well. So it's actually like the current year all the time. So an extra, extra challenge for you to do if you want to come in here and make that a bit more dynamic so you don't end up with the wrong year at one point, which is never fun. Uh, so let's go and delete this page right here for now. All right, so we're starting to get there. We're starting to get something fun to happen, but there's a lot more to it and uh, a lot more we can do. But I just think just setting up templates like this is something people always ask about. And you don't need something like PHP or something like that to get it to work. You can do all this and have it coming out as static files at the end of the day, which is really, really awesome and really, really cool. And another change I'm actually gonna make here, just because it makes your life a lot easier and you don't forget things, um, if we come here and we wrap our main here, it just means that we always know our content is inside of our main tag, which is nice semantics. And it means that along the way, you won't forget it. So I'm also gonna come and delete that um, from here. Because for me, when I'm creating a page, I just want literally the content that I'm putting in there and not have to worry too much about the other, you know, making sure how it's set up. I just wanna know it's going to the right place automatically. And so I can set that up just like that. Um, and now what I'm actually, uh, so let's go and do that also on my blog page for now. And we're gonna have the individual article page uh, that we need to update as well. But let's just take these off for now. There we go. And delete that. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is we have a blog page. And my blog page, as I said, I don't have to generate the content for this page every single time. I want this content to be automatically generated if I make a new blog post. 
And as we saw, if I come in here, I made a blog folder with markdown files. We saw already that in my public folder, in the blog, it, it was generating those into HTML files. So they're all in their HTML files for every blog post because 11T automatically takes markdown files and turns them into um, uh, HTML files. So I want to make it, if I add a new one, it's going to go and create that for me. I don't have to do any work. It's just going to add it to this page. Done is done. So let's see how we can do that. So let's go and open the blog page itself that we created. Cool. And you see everything is hard coded in here and hard coding things. We don't want to do that as much as possible. So let's just look at the page. I have my section container. I have a title that's coming in here. Then over here, I have my list. And then my list is broken up into all these little snippets, article snippets, pretty much. Hmm, okay. So let's grab this list. I'm going to take it from just the first LI and I'm going to copy that. And then I'm actually going to delete this entire list all the way down, delete the whole UL. And we're just going to leave it just like this. Hit save and everything just vanishes and we have uh, we should make something to make the footer stick to the bottom on short pages, but there we go. <laughs> we have it like this. And you know, we want it, we want to do a little bit more with this. Okay. So what we can do to make this work is we can leverage 11T being able to loop through content. Now, one thing that's really important to be able to loop through content is uh, 11D has something called collections where you can organize stuff, which is uh, like through tags and all that. So if I come and I look at my fourth article here, I have my title, my author, my date, my image, all of that. You could come in here and you could add a tag and we could say it's a post um, or it's tags, tags, post. And because you can include multiple tags if you want. And we're going to see that in, in shortly. But here I have my tags of a post. And if you don't, you might forget every now and then that you need to include a tags of post and that would suck because then it wouldn't show up on your blog. So just to ensure if you have front matter, like in this case, I have the author I'm assuming could change. But if ever you have front matter here, that is going to be the same every single time and it's never going to change. What you can do is in my blog folder here, I'm going to make a new file and we're going to call it blog.json. Um, and when we're in here, we, it, we can do whatever we want. Now it is a JSON file, so we can't do front matter this way, but we can still include front matter that we want to inject into every single page, every single time. Uh, but because it's a JSON file, we're going to start by curly braces. And then in the curly braces, we can come in and it, this time it, it's a little bit different because we're in a JSON file, but we can say layout and then you can define a layout. Now I'm not actually going to skip layout now just because I want to, we're going to see what happens if we skip it. And we're going to need a different layout for our blog articles anyway. Uh, but what we can say here is tags are going to be post just to make sure that every single one of them does get a post on it. And we're going to leave it like this for now. We're going to make one other change shortly here as well. So I'm just going to say that. So every single one of my pages is getting the tag of post no matter what, which is important for what we're going to do next. All right. So what do we want to do? We want to actually, let's just come here. I'm going to make a comment. So there's what we'd, we'd copied from our other page. So we want to, instead of having to manually do it, we want it to be able to loop through all those posts that we had. So, you know, we, we created our, post, our blog thing here to make sure all of these are considered posts. So we want to be able to loop through all of those really, really easily. So what we can do for that is let's start off with our UL here. So it's actually, we have a bit of one with some classes on there and stuff. So we'll copy that and we'll do a close UL like that. And then what we want to do is come inside of that and we want to create a loop that's going to look at all the different things uh, that are in there. So to do that, what we're going to do is uh, we want to create a loop is a little bit like what we've seen, but we're also going to add in um, some hyphens there too. So it's going to be your curly brace percentage hyphen. And then what we're going to do is create a loop. Uh, we're going to say for post in collections.post and make sure it's collections, not collection. So for post in collections.post. And then just before we forget, we also want to make sure if you have a loop, you also want to make sure that you do an end for to end your loop. And so there we go. We have a loop that's going to go and it's going to look for every post that's in my collections.post. And if you're wondering what a collection is, it's basically when you use your tags, it will group it in a collection. There is a special one called collections.all, which will include all of your collections. But because we are using tags and we're going to use them in different ways, we can do this right here. So we're going to loop through all of those posts that we've created. So here, let's just make it really easy uh, to begin with. So we'll do an LI. Uh, so we have our LI. Let's come here. We have our article class of snippet. So article, article dot snippet. So we can keep things like they originally were. And then just to keep things simple for now, we'll do an H3 
of a snippet title so it's styled properly. And here we can include our front matter and get the title of each one of our posts. Now because we are going through a loop and we need to tell it to look at each one of the posts in our, our loop, what I'm gonna do is say uh, post.data.title. So the post means look at, for each post that we loop through, look at that post, go into the data, so go into that metadata or the front matter that we had and find the title. So if we did this properly, I hit save, and we should find my first, my second, my third, my fourth, they're all showing up. Super cool, right? So now it's just a matter of filling the whole thing in and doing a little bit more work on it. Um, so normally we had the H3, we had the image that was coming at the top too. So here we had my image dot uh, snippet image. And interestingly on this, we had a source. So let's just go here and once again, this, this should be pretty simple. So we have our post.data.image. And if you're not sure on any of these, just if you go and look at any of them, you can see that I just called it image. So it's going and it's finding the title. Now I wanna find this image. So my, uh, where is it? Post.data.image. And the alt, what we can do is we can do post.data.image alt since that was another one of the ones that I included. So if we go back to here, I have my image alt, this is a test, it's gonna grab that. So if I hit save on that, now we should not only get my uh, titles coming in, but we should also get some images coming in. And it's not because, uh, silly me, I forgot to close my, my curly braces right there. So let's close my curly braces. Oh, there we go. Now my images are coming in and the layout's working just because I already did the CSS for it. So they're all falling in the right spot. Um, but there we go. So we have those coming through and I like just spacing things out just to make it a little cleaner to read. Um, so we have my image and let's turn off word wrap for a second. So we have my image, my H3. Uh, the H3, we could turn the title into a link. I'm going to look at that after though, cause it is a little bit different, but I'll fill out the rest of this cause it's pretty straightforward and all the same and a little bit boring if you watch me do the whole thing. Um, so I've got the rest of it in, but there's a few things that are going to be a bit off and we're going to fix them one at a time. So if we come and take a look, you can see that, and, and I've just done like post.data.author, so it's bringing in my name and the date. And now the date's a little bit funky, so that's definitely one of the things that we need to fix there. Um, also, my links aren't going to be working just yet. We're going to look at how we can fix the links, and they're in the wrong order. <laughs> um, so normally, if you go to a blog page, the newest article is at the top. The uh, collections like this will always just go from the first one, and it goes in the order that you've created them. Luckily, we can just throw a pipe here and just say re reverse, hit save, and it's gonna switch the order of them. So that's the easy one. That's the nice easy one that we can do right there to change the order. Um, for links, links are a little bit different uh, because what it's gonna be is this post.url. This is, the reason it's post.url and not post.data.author is the data means like go to that post, go into the metadata or that front matter we created and find the URL. In this case, we're not finding, it's not in the metadata, it's just the URL for that post. So this is like, it's being generated on its own. So if we do a link like that, it should hopefully continue reading, it's actually working. There we go. So we're coming in, these need to be fixed up. We haven't got there yet. Uh, so at least that's working. And we can use that same thing if you want your H1 to be a link or your H3. So I, inside my H3, we could come in with a, a um, and then the same thing here, we could do a post URL in there and then we just move this on over to the other side like that and so the title will be wrapped in a link and then we can click on the link and it will also bring us to our post so the nice thing with all this is now if i came in and i create a new file and do 2021 slash we'll do 06 16 just so it's a different date uh my uh we'll say a a new article dot md and let's just put in like lorem oh, is lorem gonna work in here lorem's not gonna work in here uh let's grab some from a different article <laughs> let's just grab this paste it in there hit save uh if we go back to here if we go back to that other page that article's come in now it's missing a lot of that metadata we don't have an image we don't have the other things that are coming in here but you can see it already created the new page there and on that new one that I created, we come in, we can say uh, title, a new article, hit save. Now that new article, the title should, there it is. Uh, we can see it has a new article has shown up there. We can come in and add a description. Hello world, hit save. And we get a description that should come in in a second. There it is. 
uh, and so on and so forth. So it becomes really easy. You need another blog post, you add another one, it automatically gets inserted at the top of the page right where we need it to be. I'm gonna delete this one because we don't have much going on there. We'll create a new one later on that's a little bit better though. Uh, but we still have quite a few things that we need to get done to get this thing fully functional. Um, so we switch the article order, which is really good. That's perfect. There is another issue here, in my opinion, that's coming up, which is, uh, now another issue is the date. And this is just how uh, Eleventy likes to generate dates is in this format, and which is obviously a little bit problematic with how the dates are being generated. So what we're going to do is I'm actually going to open up my terminal. We're going to cancel here because we need to go into our config and um, make it so that doesn't happen anymore and we don't get the big string like this. And so to do that, what we're going to do, as I said, in my 11T config, we're actually going to go all the way to the top here and we're going to set a const uh, and we're going to call it date time and we're going to write require Luxon. And what we want to do is be able to change how it's sort of setting things up a little bit or how it's outputting the text. Uh, so to be able to do that now we do our 11 t 11 11 t e. So we want to make a new 11 t config and in this time it's going to be um, instead of an add pass through copy we're not doing anything like that. What we want to do is add a filter. Uh, we're going to add a filter and so I'm going to call it post date. Then here we're going to say our date object object just like that and we can have ourselves a nice little function. So we want this to return. So we re return, so we have something coming out of it. And we're gonna write a date time from JS date. And that's th this is our this is our JS or JavaScript date that we're getting there. So from our JavaScript date, we're going to take our date object. So it's it's grabbing this, which is our date object. So from here we're gonna say two local uh two local string. Whoops, two local string. There we go. Uh, let's turn word wrap on so it's a little bit easier. So we have our date object to local string, say our date time, date underscore med, just like that. And so if I hit save on that, let's turn word wrap off. So again, it's date time. Uh, there we go. We can see more of it. Uh, date time from JS date with our date object. And then it's going to convert that to a local string using the date time date med that we have right there. That's all coming from Luxon. So the date time, like, you know, why date med like that? That's just, that's using the Luxon here, which is a date formatting thing. So if I save that now and then we open this back up and we write npm start, whoops, not starter. <laughs> we need npm start just like that. Um, it's now we're able to use that. Now the thing is, this is a filter. So a filter doesn't work out of the box. So if I go and take a look here, we can refresh, we can see it's, it hasn't changed anything. So what we wanna do is go back to our, uh, I think that was our blog, right? Yeah. So where we have our blog and where the date is coming in, which was, uh, here we go, post date. Um, and actually we could do that as a data date too, cause I've included it there, but, um, the post date, it will actually grab it from the file name. So if you start your file names with the date, that's where it's going to grab the, um, the dates from. So you don't necessarily have to include it, uh, as uh, front matter. And so here, what I can do is post date, um, and we, we can use the filter that we did. And just as a reminder, the filter that we did here is my post date. So it just means we can use this post date right here. So post date just like that, hit save. And now we have properly formatted dates that look a little bit nicer. And I'm gonna give a full shout out to Stephanie Eccles for this one uh, from 11T Rocks, 11T Rocks. This one was something that I was having some trouble figuring out. So from here, uh, 11T config.js config samples. And in here, where is it, where is it? Uh, date short codes and filters. So there we go. And even actually here, if you wanted to fix that, uh, that one at the bottom where you could bring in the year automatically. Uh, but here's where I got that from. So I was digging around for a while and luckily I found this, uh, this here. And if you're learning 11T and you want to know more about it and some useful resources, uh, the link will be down below for 11T rocks because it helped me out immensely. So thank you very much, Stephanie. Um, all right, so we're getting there. We have this all working. All my articles are showing up, which is awesome. They all have the properly formatted dates. But now when I click this, we obviously need this to be formatted properly. Ha, uh, okay. So for this one, I did create a template already for us. So that was the individual article. So let's grab this. So we can just take this whole thing. I'm gonna cut it and we're gonna delete you from here. Uh, you can move it and rename it, I guess, but we'll go back into the includes and I'll make a new file and we'll call this article.njk and we can paste it in uh, just like before. We don't need to have 
all of it all the way up to our main because remember we included the main in our, our base file. So I can delete that and I can delete all of this right here. And now we have an article here. So here in our front matter, we can say that the layout is base.njk, just like that. And obviously we don't wanna be coming in with things like my third article and this is a test and all of that. So uh, here, once again, we do wanna set this up with the same way that we set things up earlier. Um, now this time we're not running through a loop or anything like that. So I can just, you have to think that this is being inserted directly in the page. So we're not doing like our post.data.title. We can just access title because the information is being inserted directly into this. We're not looping through and pulling information from somewhere else to insert into another page. This is to generate this actual page. So I can just throw in title just like that. Uh, so title here, my, uh, this could be my uh, open and close. Here is my image. Here it's going to be my image alt. Um, and in this case, actually, we're gonna, I, ha I set it up to use a fig caption, so we might as well use the alt text to generate our uh, caption automatically within a figure, just like that. And so what I'm setting up here is, we're gonna do this quickly, and here what I can do is my content of safe. And this is interesting what I'm doing right now, because what we're doing is we're actually taking this and we're gonna be taking other content that's gonna get inserted to here, and then this entire thing is gonna get inserted into our base layout. So we're sort of nesting or chaining together these different templates along the way. So that's pretty cool. And now what I want is I want every single one of my blog pages to use this template. So I could go through and open up each one of my, let's go to blog, and then you open up each one of these and add that to your metadata. Or if you remember, we created this blog.json, which will do it anything that's included here will automatically get put on every single one. So this layout, we could say that this layout is going to use my article, article.njk. Make sure there's a comma at the end, separates it from here. Hit save, and if we did this properly, let's go back, continue reading. Oh my goodness, it worked. <laughs> and we have a layout that's functional and everything's working. So from home, we can go to our blog. All my blog articles are showing up here. I click continue reading. It's putting the title, so it's using my blog. It's, uh, it's using this article. So it's using the article. It's grabbing the title from that article, inserting it here. It's grabbing the image and the caption that I set up from the front matter. All that's being done there. And then it's inserting whatever content I needed in after that automatically. It's just really, really cool. <laughs> um, so I think that's really awesome and really neat that all of that is working and it's just, it seems magical almost. So if we added a new one, the page would get generated, the full page would get generated, all of this would get put in, and we have the blog that is going to be here. It will automatically get added to my blog here. We're almost done. We do have a few things up, uh, to update still though, and the main thing I wanna focus on, we're gonna get this featured article area working, and because right now these buttons aren't working, and we just need a little loop here, so it's the same type of idea. And so we're gonna get this section working, and then after that, we're gonna get our CMS involved in here. So we're getting there, guys, we're getting there. A bit of a long one, but we're getting there. Um, now for this, and the interesting thing is here, you know, I need to do the same thing that I did over here. I need to grab all this thing and populate a snippet. And well, I already did that. I just wanna go through a bit of a different grouping of posts. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is on all these posts, you'll see I have a tags here of post and featured. Um, and the reason I have that is that's on my first one. If I go here, actually my second one, let's delete that. We don't want that. We only want three featured articles, but you could have as many as you want. Um, but as we go through these, some of them I want featured and some of them I don't. One thing I found out the hard way uh, is that um, if you add in the featured here, it will, like if we just say that the tag is featured, it's actually gonna remove the, the one of posts. So here, if I just say that this is here, uh, let's just do that, I hit save. Um, you will find out this is my fifth article. So if I go to my blog, you see the fifth one has actually disappeared because it switched it from post to featured. So what I'm doing now is I'm just saying that if it's featured, it also is post so it doesn't overwrite it. We're gonna see when we set this up in the CMS side of things though, there's a nice little way to avoid having to like add posts in. We can have that set as a default in there and we can add featured as a tag when we need to. So that's just a nice little thing on the CMS side that makes our life a bit easier. So what we wanna do is we only wanna grab the ones that are featured and not the ones that don't have the featured tag on them. So how can we do that? 
So we've already created a loop that we had probably used, but we only want it to grab the featured ones. So let's go back to this blog for a second here. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take this whole thing. I'm going to pull it out of here. <laughs> um, so let's hit a, do, do, do. Uh, we're going to grab this here and I'm going to do a cut. And we're gonna go back into my includes. We're gonna make a new include that's gonna be article snippet dot njk. And we're gonna paste that in here. And you'll see why in a second. So this makes this reusable. I can use it wherever I want now. So where I was already using it, which was on my blog page, <laughs> we can now in this part here, we can include it. So include my in quotation marks, article snippet dot njk. Uh, just really fast, if ever you put a space here or you have a space here, whoops, uh, a space there, it's going to break this. It's not going to, it's going to count that space as part of the file name. So just make sure that they're always tight and you don't have spaces. I've run into that problem in the past too. So if I hit save on that, actually let's delete this. Let's delete that whole thing and hit save and see my whole thing disappears. So by bringing that back in, hitting save, it's taking that partial, inserting it here, and it's running it through that loop. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this whole thing that we've already set up here. We're going to go over to my index page. And in my index page, we have my featured articles, my container, my title, my paragraph, and then we have my UL. So we can go through and let's just delete from here all the way down, delete that whole UL and paste that same thing back in. And we'll hit save and hopefully now on my homepage, if we go to home, we should see all five of them. Fourth, third, second, first, uh, not save my, let's go back to my fifth. Let's just make sure that's saved. That should get generated and get put back in. There we go, my fifth one is now showing up. Now I don't want all five of them. I only want to include the featured ones. How can I do that? I want you to think about it actually. You're looking at this, we've been playing around with it a lot. How would you make it so instead of going and getting all of them, it's only getting the featured ones? So I hope you said, <laughs> here we have four post in collections.post. Well, I want my collection of featured. And we're gonna hit save on that. And now you can see I have my fifth, my third, my first. The other ones are not included. And if just for fun, I go into my first one and I remove this right here, hit save. Look at that, now we're down to two. So it's only going through and it's only including the ones that are have the featured tag on it. If it's not featured, it's not doing it. It's using the same loop, but it's looping through a different set of information. So we've made it a lot easier to be able to do it. If ever we need to update and have it update on all of my pages at the same time, we have one include where we can change something here and it's going to change it everywhere. Uh, so that could be maybe you don't want a button anymore. You want to make this just a regular link. Well, you just take this off. We don't need that class anymore. We turn that into a regular link. And if we go back over to my blog page, the regular links over here too, because it's using the same, the exact same HTML everywhere, inserting it everywhere. Ah, so nice. <laughs> so there we go. And again, this is all coming out as static files at the end of the day on the user side. So there we go. This is all looking good. I think actually my most recent articles is the only thing that's not working on my homepage because um, I clicked on that before. It might've edited that part out. But this is going to my blog.html. And you can see here, this, the reason that image changes is because I used an unsplash it image there instead of an actual one. Um, and actually the reason it's working is because I'm looking for my blog.html. But as I said, uh, 11T always makes pretty links. So everything gets, if we go and look in my public, it's making a blog that's then getting an index. So I shouldn't have done an HTML. I should have just had dot my blog there. And then if we click on that, it brings us over to here. And then we get all our pages. So just like that, all of this section is done. So we're getting to the surprisingly easy part of getting this online and working with a CMS. All right, so we wanna get this up and online. So the very first thing we have to do is get back into GitHub or if you're doing this, you, you know, we have Git integration with VS Code if you're doing it through your command line. Uh, I've done everything here in like one big shot, but um, if you've been saving along the way, all the better. And we're just gonna say we 11 t fied the static pages. And you know, whatever. Uh, we 11 defied the static pages. So I'm going to commit that all in one big shot. We're not doing any version control here too much. We're going to push that up to the server. And again, if you're using integrated thing, using the command line, it doesn't matter as long as you get everything uh, up and onto GitHub because the next step after that, once it's been put onto GitHub, 
and all your updates are there and live on GitHub is to go over to Netlify. So I'm already here. I have an account. If you don't, it's free to set up. As you can see, I have multiple sites here. I have more than what you see here. They're all running on Netlify. It's all for free. They do have paid options and paid tiers, but for most things that you probably want it for on a smaller scale, uh, there's no need to worry. There's an upgrade and stuff, but free plan all the way. Uh, the only thing it's not included is the domain name, just because we don't get free domain names. But um, all the hosting itself is free, and it's really easy to. You can either purchase a domain name through Netlify, or you can, if you already have a domain, it's the easiest thing in the world to link them together. Uh, so I'm going to choose. Uh, let's go back there. New site from Git. And I can choose GitHub. I'm already linked, so you can see it's already authorized. And we have my 11T blog site. Um, I've already added it to Netlify. Uh, by default, I think you might you might have to go to the configure the Netlify app on GitHub to find the repo that you want to add in. Sometimes it's all your repos. Other times it's not all of them. It's only select ones and stuff like that. So you just want to you know pick and choose. Um, or you might just have a list of all of them. You can search through your repos and all of that. You want to find the repo that you're going to be using. And you want to check here and look for um, the different things. So the owner there, the main branch, that's the one that we're running off of. So you could actually have it deploy off sub branches and you can actually have other branches deploy. Like you can have it create sites based on branches. So you can test things out, look at only that branch live, send it to other people. And then if it's good to commit into the main branch, then you can pull it in. It's really cool. Netlify is awesome. Um, and then you'll see the basic build settings here. The base directory, you'd think you might want to put something there, just leave it blank. We don't want to put anything there. Um, this is for different types of builds than something simple like we have now. It already figured out that we want an NPM run build, so we're just going to leave that alone. That is what we set up when we did our package.json here. There we go, our build right there. So the build is just going to do an NPM run build, so it means it's going to fire this, it's going to build our site. Um, and then the publish directory, it, so it figured out on its own that I'm using 11T. And as I said, the underscore site is the default public directory. In this case, we've changed it. So if you did change it like I did, just make sure you change your publish directory here to whatever your, your public folder is, wherever your, your final files are living. Make sure you update that right there. If you want to go into advanced settings, you can or not. We're just going to hit deploy site and we're going to cross our fingers that it works. <laughs> Um, so it doesn't take too long to do, but you'll see it says starting up. So actually, if we click, we can watch this happen. And you'll see it go through uh, all the different steps that it's going to be going through here. It really generally doesn't take very long uh, to build a site, especially because we're using 11T, which builds tend to be pretty quickly. And there we go. It's all done. It's finished. The site is live. The build script is a success. So if you go to here, now you'll actually see that for this site here, here's our, and you can customize this too. Let's. Let's go and look at it live on the internet first though. So there it is. It's all working just like magic. There's my post. Go to my blog page. This is live on the internet. Um, so if you do want to go to, I can go to my deploy settings um, and then I can go to domain management. So you can actually change the custom domain that you have, edit site name, and you can come up with your own if you'd prefer to have one. Um, and you can also add custom domains, whether you're purchasing one through uh, Netlify or you're bringing your own in from a, a third party. Um, that, which is what I've always done and it's always been super easy to do. So my site is up and live and it's working. So you could stop here. You could be happy. It's online. People have access to it. And this is where what you would need to do if this is where you want to stop, what you could do is you could come to here and let's just go to my blog and whoop, not in the public folder, <laughs> in my source folder. I go to my blog and let's just copy this one here. So I'm just going to copy that one and paste it and we'll rename it. <laughs> Uh, so that's 2021-06-16-a new post. So I have a new one there. We're going to call this one my sixth. We'll do it like that. Uh, or, you know what, my yet another article. And we'll delete the date because we don't need it. And I'll delete this. And what we'll do is we'll hit save. So locally, it's it's there. But then what you'd want to do is go to your here and we can do uh, added new blog post. You commit it to your GitHub branch, you push it over there. And what this is going to do is it as soon as it hits that branch, Netlify is going to see that there was a change. So if we go to here, you can see it's actually building again now. So it saw a change to the main branch, which is the production branch. So as soon as it sees a change there, Netlify automatically rebuilds the entire site for us. So in doing that, we can go here, we can see that it's building it. I think it's probably almost done. It's already published. So I can refresh over here now and let's go to my home. Actually, no, it would be on the blog. Let's go over my blog. 
Oh, my dates are a little bit screwed up. Um, so actually, we can look at how we can fix that too. It's right here. Yet another article has shown up here live on the site. Just by pushing that change from, I make my local change, I push that change onto GitHub, Netlify sees that, it updates things, and boom, my article comes and it's live over here. So that's just so, so nice and so fancy. And uh, I just think that's really cool. So that worked out great. Um, but what I'm most interested in now is just getting set up with the CMS. And this is really easy to do. There's other ones out there. Sometimes getting set up with the CMS uh, is easier if you're doing it from the very, very beginning. But the Netlify CMS is surprisingly easy to get set up afterward. So we're going to jump into the docs here just because we are going to need a few things from here. But we can see how to add it to your site right there. And again, this will be linked down in the description below. Um, and they give us a little bit of a rundown on different things we can do. But the really basic thing is this right here. So I'm going to go back over to my local build and right here. We're going to come into my source folder here. And we're going to make a new folder called admin. And in admin, we're going to make two files. One of them is an index.html. And the other one is a config.yml, which is YAML, right there. Uh, so the index, it just gives us something we can copy and paste right there. So, you know, let's just copy and paste that right there. <laughs> um, and the other one that we can do is, um, you'll notice here there is the, the script here. We're going to have to add a bit of scripting to our pages as well for the login and everything. But for now, we pull this in. It should work. It says if you do have an issue with this, they give an alternative. So um, uh, there is also a way to get this set up with NPM if you'd rather go the, like, doing it that way. I'm just creating the files this way. So you can choose how you want to work. Um, and then we can come down a bit and start setting things up. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to copy this and we're going to bring that into our YAML file that's right here. And we don't need this comment. Um, my branch, in this case, it's, it's still defaulting to master and uh, GitHub has changed master to main. So we know that we're working off my main one and I can just leave Git gateway here. So it's saying the back end is Git gateway. So it's based on uh, Git and the branch that it's going to be looking for is my main branch. So that's set up. We now have a back end uh, ready to go for uh, Netlify to start getting things to be working. And they do say if you're using Bitbucket that they have special instructions there instead. So you can go and check those out if you happen to be hosting on uh, Git bucket, a Bitbucket in, uh, instead. Uh, there is an editorial workflow, which just means you can actually save posts as drafts and different things like that. So it doesn't automatically publish. Uh, so if you want to enable that, you can. It pretty much just uses branches uh, to be able to maintain the different states of articles. So whether it's a draft or whether it's for review and all of that. So you could do a publish mode. I'm not going to bother with that now. But one thing that's really important is our media folder here. And there's actually two. We have a media folder and a public folder. So we're going to want to set both of those up to tell it where the images should be saved and where things are going to look for their images, basically. Um, so for that, what we're going to do is we're going to come to here. Uh, so that's the first one was our media folder. And you know what? Let's make our life a little bit easier. Let's we can do that so we can actually see what we're trying to do. So media folder, we have to tell it where the, the our media files are currently living. So don't think of the media folder as in relation to where this file is. Think of it, where do they live from the root of your folder. So they're in my public folder. So we go into public. So if you have a different name, if it was underscore site, you could do underscore site, whatever it is, wherever it needs to go. Then from there, in my case, I have my assets. So if you have an images folder, you could go into there. And because I'm really setting this up for my blog, I do have in my uh, blog, uh, in my assets, I do have a blog section where we can put our blogs. Um, if you'd rather it doesn't go to there, you could have it go to assets and uploads. You can have it go to assets and images. You can go whichever one you want. Um, I'm going to have it go to blog because I'm only setting this up for that. If you're setting this up to also have like, you know, I'm setting this up right now just to be running a blog site. If this is like a blog and a portfolio and your portfolio items are also, you can run that all through the CMS too. You can add new portfolio items. So if you want to do it that way, maybe having a blog folder here doesn't make as much sense. But um, that's where the media folder is. But then we also want the public uh, folder here. And the public folder is important to actually get the images to show up to get it to look get it to look for images in the right places pretty much. So I want to make sure it goes to here. Um, and basically, it's just the same thing without the public assets slash blog, because this is where it's going to save the files to. But once we're in that public folder, like pages are living there, they're not jumping all the way back to public. That's that's their root folder. 
So we're going to be hanging out just in assets and blog here. So if you don't include this, it could be that your images don't work once they're uploaded because it won't be looking for them or linking to them in the right way. Um, and now we get to the more complicated part. And all of this is in here. It's these collections and collections is when you have a CMS and you, you know, you new post and then you get all the different, you get like a GUI, right? You have an interface where you can put in all your stuff. Well, we have to create all the different things we want there. And you can actually create different types of collections here, which is really interesting. So we're going to write collections and we're going to skip this part here. We're just, um, actually they're showing us here. This is the front matter and it's really, really, really linked to the front matter. So you know what I'm actually going to do? It's going to make our life a bit easier. Let's split that off to the side here. Um, so we can actually be looking at this and seeing our front matter at the same time. So we know we're including all the different pieces of front matter that we need to include. So my collections is in this case, uh, we're going to go to a new line and then we're going to say that the name is blog and then we want to label it. So I'm going to label that as blog and everything you're going to see, there's lots of names and you have to name and label pretty much everything. So the label, as you can see here is what's used in the UI. Um, and then this is used for like where, you know, in the roots, so admin collections blog. Um, so how things are sort of set up. So we have my label right there. Next, we need the folder. Uh, this is where it's getting, the folder is where it's getting the original, like where, where are things coming from? So they're actually coming from source uh, blog in this case. So that's really looking at my, do my document structure. My blog posts originally live in the source and in here. So what's going to happen is when I make a new blog post, it's going to save it as a markdown file inside of here. And then because it saves it in there, that's going to trigger an update on my main branch of GitHub. And then GitHub's going, Netlify is going to see that it's going to build the site and it's going to take that markdown file with all the different uh, generated information from here as front matter. And it's going to turn that into a blog post. Seems a bit complicated, but it works really well. So just the folder here isn't the finished folder. This is the one that the where you would create them manually. So if you're going to manually create a new blog post, where is that going? So right there. So we also have the create true here just to make sure that people can actually create posts. Um, there's the slug here and the slug is going to control the, um, the file name. And I'm actually going to use the same one example of what they have here just because it's the easiest way to do it. So it's just like I've already been naming my files, the date and then the name. So it's going to do the same thing. It's going to put the date and then follow it up with the slug. And in this case, the slug is the, um, it's going to be like the title of the post that I put. So we're going to leave it like that. Um, and now's the fun part, the fields. So the fields, I mean, we could get some information from this one, but I'm going to hide that away um, because the fields are all based on what we see right here. So for fields, push return, tab over, hit a hyphen, and now we get into our fields. So for the first one, um, and you could format these in different ways. I'm going to do it in a bit. And actually, we're going to do it like this just because I find it keeps things more clean. But if you wanted to space things out over multiple lines, you also could do that. Um, we're going to have a label. So I want I want to be able to put in a title on my post. So I write title, then the name for that. So we can have a name of title. Then so this is like oh, it's going to show up as a widget. So here I'm going to write widget. And then we have to say what type of widget is it? And in this case, it's a string. Um, so string just means it's going to give me a t like a, a text, like a text error, uh, not a, it's going to give me an input type text. Basically, it's going to let me write a string of text in so it can publish it. So I have a title that I can write as a string. So let's just duplicate that because the next one that we're going to need is my author. So I'm just really going to follow author, which is my author. And that's also a string. The next one we want is my date. All right. So let's add a, we can do date. The name is date. Um, so for the widget, we don't want a string. We don't want to write it in. We want a date time. So now it's actually like you click it, it's going to come up with the calendar and you can choose what date uh, you want to set on that. So we can have a date come in. Uh, the next one is our, actually we'll do the tags at the end. Um, actually, I don't even know what we could do here. Let's just duplicate this. This could be title description. I know I have it in a different order here, but in this one, I think it makes more sense if the title and description go together in our UI. So description, description. So once again, widget will be just a string. Um, so for this one, let's do our feet, uh, label featured image. This could just have the name of image right here. Um, so this is where I, I actually, I should have mentioned this before. The label is what I'm going to see in the UI. The name is what we're going to be seeing is what your actual, um, 
front matter thing is here. So title is my title. Uh, author is author. That's why these are uppercase and these are lowercase. But here I can do featured image, but here I just need to put image like that because I need to make sure it's using this piece of front matter. Uh, so let's actually copy this one now. And fine, we can actually do an image widget. So we can upload an image. Let's paste that other one in here. So uh, author, this would be my uh, image caption, or it could be alt text, because um, here it's my image alt. And once again, that one would just be a string. So that's perfect. And the last, we need two more, uh, but one of them is going to be, let's do our label, is going to be a body. We'll call it body. It's like the, the core of my text, right? Uh, in this case, with the body like that, um, the name is less important, uh, but we'll come in with our body right there. And then the widget, in this case, we want our widget, which is, you know, we actually have to write a blog post. We don't want just like a, a text input. So we can actually write markdown here mark down and it's going to give us a markdown editor that we can use to uh, make our sites so that's pretty cool um, the last thing i want to be able to do is the tags and i mentioned earlier on that like if we left it and we just put featured like it could overwrite that so we can actually set defaults on some of these as well for uh we're going to create a select list that's going to have a default um, so i'm going to put this one after date and again the order that they're showing up here is the order they're going to show up in the ui so i'm going to do it here and so we're gonna have a label of tags, capital, since we've capitalized everything else. Uh, name is going to be tags. And then the widget, widget, uh, in this case, is going to be a list. And in this case, we're also going to have a default. And my default is going to be a post, like that. So by default, it's going to have a post. But if we want to add features to it, we could add features. And you could delete post technically, but at least it's there as a default so we don't accidentally delete it or anything like that. So there we go. All of that is set up. And now so we've sort of set up like the structure of what things are going to look like within our UI. So this is cool. We, we have a back end that's coming together. Let's hit save on that. And we're not going to publish it yet just because there are a few other steps to get this to work. So let's go back over to the documentation. And we're gonna see, uh, so I mean, if you do need, they do have a page that actually shows you more of the different things you can choose from on all of this. Uh, the widgets doc, it goes over what all the different widgets are and the different options that you have and everything. Um, and they give you options of using them. So just, just so you know, you can choose from a whole bunch of different stuff here, which is kind of cool. Um, but we don't wanna do that right now. We've set all that up. Um, next we wanna do is this, the authentication. So we have our Netlify CMS in place. Let's ensure we have the net. Um, and so this one is a bit more copying and pasting. You got to set things up. Uh, so we need to go to our Netlify site to be able to do this. And we're going to go to the site settings. And at first, we're going to go identity down here. And this is important because there's actually two places where there's an identity. And this threw me for a loop. And I spent like, people were on a live stream. I was looking all over for it and I couldn't find what I needed. I was going nuts. And so for this first part, we're using the identity that's in the sub menu. So you just go to your site overview site settings, and the identity in the sidebar, really important. And then we enable identity. So this means people can actually log in. Um, you can see this is something you can pay more money for if you need like other levels of stuff, but we're gonna keep it at the default. Uh, what I am gonna do is registration is open. I'm gonna edit this and say it's invite only, just so not anybody can log into my site. Um, so we're gonna save that. You can also use um, external providers. So we could actually make it so people can log in using GitHub. So let's enable GitHub. I think that makes sense. So you can, don't have to create your own username and password. If you have a GitHub account, you can log into your site. That's kind of cool. And you can do a little bit more here and set up some email. Oh, you have to upgrade to set up the emails. But there's other stuff that you can uh, you know, edit your template and et cetera, et cetera. But um, now there's, remember when we set up our configuration here, we chose the back end of Git Gateway. So there's one more thing we have to do, which is scroll all the way down and keep going, keep going. There we go, services, Git Gateway, and click on that as well. It's going to pop up. There we go. Luckily, it's hiding my API access <laughs> token for me. So I'm ready to go. So let's jump back on over to my authentication. It's going to talk more about that. It mentions uh, here, we need these scripts. And the reason I step, uh, here's the Git Gateway part, um, but we need to add these scripts. So here it says, with the back end, to handle it, you need a front end to connect to it. So the open source Netlify Identify widget, do, do, do. Um, so you just want to include this in this widget in two places. So I'm going to copy this. It says you want it in the head of the CMS. So in the index file, you want it there, as well as the head of the ma site's main index page. So the first one we can do is here, uh, it says in the head of my admin. So that's fine. I'll save it right there. 
Um, and then the other one, what we're going to do is we want to go to our base file, right? Because we need, we want to make sure that it's going to be working everywhere. So I'm going to go to my base file. Um, they do say to put it in the head. I have set it up with defer and it's worked fine. So I'm going to leave it there because I haven't run into any issues with it. But I'll just say they might be saying it needs to be in the head for a specific reason. Um, so just if you run into an issue, maybe just take the defer off. But I've had the defer on and I've never had any uh, issues with it. So I'm going to save that. And there's one more thing we need to do, which is to include this script too. And this is just to make sure the redirects work properly when somebody logs in so they don't just keep getting kicked out to the wrong spot. So still on my base.njk file, I'm going to go all the way to the very end right before my close body and I'm going to include the script down there. You could make this an external script and just link to it as well, but um, this works fine for me. So I'm going to leave that right there. And now we should be able to log in to our, uh, our admin panel. So I know that you can do some testing of this locally on your machine as well as uh, doing it through GitHub as well as doing it online. I've always run into more success using this online. I've run into some issues with it on the locally hosted version. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and we're gonna say added CMS, commit to main, push origin, and that shouldn't take too long. That's done. That means that if we go back to here, we should see, let's go all the way up. Oh, there is one more thing we have to do actually. I just thought of it. Uh, so this is building. So while that's building, this is where I was looking for something. I was in this identity. I'm looking all over the place. I can't find anything. If you want someone to be able to log in, you have to add them to it because we, remember we made it so it's uh, invite only. We made it not for anybody to, to be able to get in. So if you set this up to be invite only, we can't do it. it. It talks about in the docs, the identity. They mean this one up here. So now we click to this identity here and you can invite a user. So let's invite myself. Kevin, 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 Powell.co. I'm going to click send so I get an invite. That should uh, shoot me over an email. So it is off screen, but I promise you I got an email. I'm going to click the link. And so it just says um, accept the invite. I just click a link that says accept the invite. And let's pull this on over to here. There we go. You can see complete my sign up. So I can either create a password for myself or I can say continue with GitHub. So let's continue with GitHub. I can sign in. Don't want to save that there. I'm logged in as myself. That's wonderful. And now my account is linked to GitHub, which is now linked to this site. So let's go see what happens. We're going to come to here and I'm going to write admin. So it's this forward slash admin. I should get this. Oh no, failed to load the config file. What did I do? Failed to load. I made a mistake. <laughs> All right. So this is, this is, uh, let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. It's not a big deal. It's a nice, simple thing. Um, this is one of those things you run into and it's a really silly one. And I'll show you, I've done this before, which is why I know what happened. So everything here hopefully is fine. There's possibility that there's a small little error here. Um, but if I see here, I have my admin in my source file. If I go to my admin here, I only have an index file. I don't have, so it built my admin, but it's not sending my admin uh, config file to the public area where it's required to be. Ah, uh, good old 11T. So that just means I do need to go into my 11E. We need a new pass through filter. Uh, so I'm just going to copy that and you could just set it up for, I'm just going to say anything. If it's in my admin file, I want to make sure that it makes it into the finished version. So let's save that. Let's go back to, uh, here to say, uh, fixed admin, uh, admin panel. Let's hope that worked and hit commit to main, push it and fingers crossed this time it actually worked. <laughs> so let's jump back on over. Let's see what's happening over here. Site overview, it's building, shouldn't be too much longer now. All right, so it is now finished building. So now let's go check it out. We should be able to get this to work. <laughs> go to my site, go to admin, log in with Netlify identity, continue with GitHub. I've already linked my GitHub with that. There, we're logged in. We're here. Look at that. It's loading entries. Now, I already think there might be a small issue because it hasn't loaded in my existing entries yet. So that just shows me that maybe I set something up a little bit wrong because I should see all my existing blog posts here. But let's just click new blog post and see. And look at that. We have my title, my description, my date. And I have a date time picker. I can choose what date I want it to be published on. Here's my post. I can do comma, featured. And then I have a new tag and that works. Choose an image. 
Let's go upload an image. Uh, upload, yes. Uh, let's just go to my downloads folder and choose a piece of code right there. Let's open you. So I have an image that's going to go. Choose selected. Uh, so let's even let's let's see what happens here. Hello world, how are you? Now you'll notice here is like the preview and it looks really ugly. You can actually set this up to use like CS specific CSS for the preview, so you'll get a better idea of what it's going to look like. Um, this is a short description right here. I can put my name. I'm just going to put Kevin into Kevin Powell just so we can see that it worked. Uh, image caption. Um, in looking at inset, not the best caption, but then we can have our whole body come in. Uh, let's just choose continue reading. Let's just copy and paste some stuff from here. Um, you'll also notice that it's a rich text editor. Whoops, wrong one. Um, so it's coming in as a rich text editor. So you can actually switch to Markdown if you prefer, or here, if you like this, you can just you know hit bold, hit bold, add links, do whatever you want, set it all up, and and fragment we can get rid of. Um, and then we hit publish, publish now, and I should have published a new article. Uh, as I said, though, it's possible. Oh, no, there they all. They all did load in. Everything was okay. It just took a minute for it to find them. So there we go. We just published a new article. So if I go back to here, we might even see, did it already finish? Let's refresh my page here. I think it's still building. Look at that. It already finished. <laughs> it already finished building uh, that new one. So if I go back to my live site, I'm on my live site. Let's go to my uh, homepage here. And let's go to my blog. There it is with my new image. Oh my goodness. And let's go back to my homepage. And I made that a featured article. So it's showing up in my featured articles. Cool. And I go, you know what? I don't want to have those featured articles. I want to, I, I don't want that to be a featured article. I want to take that away. I just go back to here. Hello world. How are you? I just come in here. I can remove that. I can change the image. We could change our text a little bit. Let's say, you know, I have a very short description. Let's come in with a longer description for it. There we go. And I guess that even the description, we could probably set that up as a markdown because it's sort of mucking things up right now. So you could probably have that as a markdown instead. And then you publish it. And again, if you want, you can enable like a way to have drafts and to have reviews and all of that as well. So as soon as you do that, it pushes that change to it pushes that change when I hit publish to my main thing. That triggers Netlify to start building it. It's building here right now. It will not take long. And then maybe if we're lucky, if I refresh here, nope, not yet. There we go. It's updated. It's gone from here because I took it off. <laughs> I go. Uh, I took off the featured article. I go to blog. It's still here. You can see it's the new text has come in. So cool, so wonderful, and not that hard to set up. And you could use this in a lot of different ways too. You could definitely build this out and do a lot of other awesome things with this. You could add in a portfolio to it. You could do so many powerful things with it, all built with 11T or any other static site generator going through the CMS here. It's not the prettiest CMS in the world, but it gets the job done and it's just so easy to set up. All right, so what did you think about that? Do you see yourself using a static site generator like 11T and setting up a CMS and all of that? Is it worth the trouble? Was it, I didn't find it that bad to set up, but I want to know what your opinions on it so leave a comment down below if you're already using one tell me which one are you already using what do you think about 11e i'd love to know and with that a really big thank you to code mentor for bringing this video to you guys this again is a project from there that i helped create you can get a link to that project just down below that includes my starting template that i used as well as the finished version if you want to check out my finished code as well and if you don't want to do my project there's also a lot of other awesome projects there that you can use for inspiration and to challenge yourself and to grow as a front-end developer and if you need help with just your front end journey in general, you'd like to work with a mentor one-on-one, -on -one. Code Projects is there just for that. Of course, another really big thank you to Zach and Randy, who are my supporters of Awesome over on Patreon. So thank you guys so much for your monthly support, as well as all my other patrons. You guys are the absolute best. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.